to his word and to the ministry. And Paul said, when I had the heavenly call, I was not disobedient. Hallelujah. There is a man amongst us who had a heavenly call and was not disobedient. Hallelujah. He obeyed the call of God, and that is why we are here. In Colin Church, we always begin the word by singing, this is my story, this is my son. Blessed assurance. Hallelujah. And so I've asked Pastor Louis and the team to put together something to tell the story of Colin Church. Hallelujah. Can you put your hands together as our Pastor Louis comes together? I remember I went into a, a minister's, a, a, a bishop organized a minister's prayer meeting and I went there and Bishop Copeland was there that day, that day, and that was my first day of meeting um, Bishop Peter and we had an awesome, awesome prayer. I'll never forget a prayer meeting and that was the beginning of what we are seeing, hallelujah. And now it's all over the world, it's been to where, Bishop's been to India, Zimbabwe is doing amazing things. And I just want our Pastor Louis to tell the story um, in the best way that he has packaged it. God bless us. Yes, God bless us. God bless us. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, men and women of God. Everyone is quiet. I say good afternoon. Good afternoon. Yeah. It's, not, it's nice to say good afternoon sometimes, isn't it? Yeah. Amen. Amen. I'm not going to repeat what the man of God has said. Um, I just want to also want to acknowledge ministers Edna and Minister Tony Morris who are here from LFT. We are also, we are also representing LFT, my very own aunt, uh, Dickiness uh, Rose and Elder Edson. We are representing LFT, which is a friend, is a friend of Colin. Uh, pastor meetings are where the minutes so they're representing their pastor. I want to give one also to Pastor Vesta. I don't know where Pastor Vesta is. Evangelist uh, Precious, Pastor Vandy. Uh, if I haven't mentioned the name, please don't come and punch me. Uh, uh, please don't punch me. But but if if, 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 if I remember your name, I'll come in. Or someone else will come in. We'll always acknowledge you. But one thing I want to say is everyone in the house of the Lord is a VIP. Uh, a very important person. Christ said to lay it all for, all for us. Well, I'm not preaching. I just want to encourage us that you may hear this minister, this minister, that, but before God, we are all sons of God. Amen. Even the women are sons of God. Amen. Lord, the Lord always refers to his children as sons. So in the realm of the spirit, there's no male, no female. We are all one in Christ. So I just want to encourage us this afternoon. I also want to uh, acknowledge uh, Sister Catherine, that's uh, our own bishop's sister. Uh, Sister Catherine, we want to say thank you for coming. Uh, you're always here when we need you. So we want to say we acknowledge you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. I'm not going to say take much of time because much of it, it's better when you see something rather than someone saying something. The ministry that we're in, I just decided to put something very funny last night, or this morning rather. I said, I started calculating the hours that we spend in church. I just want to put it in perspective, amen. amen. So, nine years of a church, especially call him, and this is average time by the way, is 1,404 hours of service. That's just once, I'm not, this is not Friday service, this is just Sunday service. So for the past nine years, we've been meeting non-stop for 1,404 hours. Give yourselves a round of applause. Let, let me reduce it to, let me bring it back to perspective. 1,404 averages to 58.5 hours, 58.5 days. So for almost two months, you've been, you've been in church, non-stop, every second, every minute for the past nine years. That's what it equates to. 58.5 days, I'm talking about 24 hours a day. 58.5, this is the service. Why am I saying this? It's very important for sometimes to take, all the time, but sometimes, to take count or to take accountability of the time we spend in God's presence. Because sometimes we spend so much time in God's presence and we look at then we look at nine years, 10, 20 years down the road. You know, I've met people say, son, I've been on this journey for a very long time. But then when you look at their life, it doesn't equate to the amount of time they say they've been in the Lord for. Then you have someone who's not even spent 1,404 hours in church. Maybe they've only spent an hour in the presence of God and their life has changed in comparison to someone who's been walking with God for 20 years. So I, I said to myself, let me put something in perspective. It's something, food for four, 1,404 hours of service. 
if let's say the Lord was to come today to take all, us, all of us here, I'll say, Lord, how many, and the Lord will be saying, the last book of life, right? Louis, you spent 1,404 hours. Let me see your words. I'm just putting everything into perspective. This is not to scare us, but this is for us to start valuing every second and every minute of our lives. That each and every Sunday that you put fuel in your car, if I was to do some calculations of fuel, they could, you could get thousands of pounds for the last nine years. But I believe that God has been doing something in your life for the last nine years in Jesus' name. Because if God hasn't been doing something in your life, you wouldn't be here. I don't know, there might be some people who have come in this afternoon who probably are not saved, we don't know about God, but God has been doing something, and even if you don't know Him, He knew you. The Bible says He knew you before you were even formed in your mother's womb. So I want to encourage us that in the nine years of calling, it's not been an easy journey. For those 1,404 hours, it's not been easy. And I say it's average hours, because sometimes the service will double the hours. So if we were to take note every Sunday, it could get to 2,000 something. But I just wanted to put an average, two months non-stop in the house of God. I believe that if you're in there and the Spirit of God is in there for two months, by the time we come out of that place, my God, the fire that will be carried, the Bible says one will chase a thousand and two, ten thousand, multiplied by ten, 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 will be chasing trillions of demons in the mighty name of Jesus. So I just want to say a little brief history of Holy Church. As you've heard, we celebrate nine years. As a ministry, we're celebrating so many years. Um, exactly yesterday, exactly 10 years ago, that's when the beginning of Calling Church started. It started as a ministry. At that time, it was a ministry, seventh of the seventh. That's when the Lord did something. I would just say, I would say it was a revival. When the Lord really moved, and the Lord moved with the young people at the time, 2007, and the Lord was prophesying and speaking things were going to happen in the church 10 years down the road. 10 years down the road. And I'm here to testify that a lot of things have actually been accomplished in the nine years. It is very important, again, to take time. Because if we don't take a note of what we're doing in the presence of God, God will bless us and we won't even see it. Do you know something? When God blesses you, in front of you there's also another challenge next to it. So you have to be fighting a new fight. But what, what happens is, the fight comes before the blessing. So God is blessing you on things that He's already told you He blessed you a long time ago. That the challenge comes that you miss that the blessing has come. And because you're not, your own antenna is not tuned with God, sometimes we miss what God has done. Even the promises that God has given us. Colin has promised so many times. Last night we were going through the book of prophecy of the house of Colin. And by the grace of God, we're going to have a chronicles of Colin by God's word, God grace. Amen. Where all these prophecies will be put in one book. And then you start to see, wow, so in 2001, the Lord said this, wow, it's happening now. And God has been doing that. So 2007 started the fire of God. 2008, that's when Colin Church was launched as a church. Amen. And when the church was launched, the prophecies that were prophesied years before, even before we met the man of God, were starting were started to manifest. Were starting to manifest. So 2008, the church started. 2009, the church was going. 2010, a work started in Norway. Is that the first time when Bishop went to Norway? A work started in Norway, called him Norway. That was the first branch. Uh, for all those that don't know, Calling Church is an apostolic ministry to send God's people to do the work of God. It's got a kingly anointing, a kingly ministry. So it sends forth people of God. Apostles are raised, pastors are raised, evangelists are raised, uh, teachers are raised, mighty men and women of God are raised in the ministry. I'm, I'm an example of those who God is raising in the ministry of Calling Church. For the past 10 years I've been in calling, and I really want to thank God. Had it not been God, I wouldn't be standing here this afternoon. So the church started, the work started in 2010, the work in Norway started, and the Lord continued to, to add to the church in Norway, and things continued going. Another work was started in 2012 in Scumford. It was part of for a little while because God was doing some work, but the man of God just started moving in the apostolic grace. I remember when we had a discussion, I'm saying, man of God, as an apostle, when you start moving, because I was reading these stories of apostles moving and signs and its wonders were following. The moment the apostle moved from the, 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 the town of, of, of Plumstead and started moving to further, you know, in the country, amen, things started happening. People were receiving their healing. Their healing. I mean, we've got testimonies that we could have put on a video, but I believe that 2018, when we're celebrating our 10th year anniversary, everything will be there. We'll see what God has done in a decade, amen. But I'm just going to give it compressed 10 years into like 10 minutes of a presentation. So the work started in Scarfo and the work was going on by God's grace. 
but for a season the work has been departed and it's come for, which the Lord is reviving now in this season in Jesus' name. And, and we're also proud to say we've now got an ordained and licensed reverend in Scunthorpe in the name of Jesus. So God was doing some work in the background. Work started in Newcastle. Pastor Martin is here sitting at the far, on my far left, with his wonderful wife and children. The work was started, he was the one taking the work in, 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 Scunthorpe, in Newcastle. But the work initially started in Margate. But because he had to move from Margaret to Newcastle, he took on the work to Newcastle. And testimonies have come from Newcastle. I remember a time when work started in Newcastle. Many marriages were, there were marriages that took place in the church. So many people were living a life where they were cohabited. But the man of God, when he says, for God to really add it to the house, do the right thing before God. And so many people were married. I, I thought you guys would be excited that people were married. Come on guys, let's get excited for what God is doing. Amen. So the work started in Newcastle, but before, as you know, the apostles, they go to pull down strongholds and they go to build places. The bishop went with his wonderful wife, prophetess, and they went to start pulling down things that were not right and putting some structures in place. And the church in Newcastle today is still standing in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Are we excited? Now, remember, you're partaking of what, what I'm saying. I'm not just saying it to, you know, as a show off, because when one is celebrating, all of us are celebrating. As you've come here today, the same anointing that is in this house, you will rub off. You know what, what billionaires do? Billionaires do not say, because I'm a billionaire, I don't want your money. Billionaires are very greedy. Even if they've got billions, they still want more billions. So I know there's mighty men and women of God who are anointed in this place. But I know that this man and woman of God are in the spirit. They say there's this anointing. I want to tap into that anointing. Yes, God has given me this, but I want to tap into that grace so that I can do even double in the name of Jesus. So that's why I say let's celebrate for what God is doing. Amen. The next testimony, uh, another church was started in um, the work for a season. The, 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 the man of God was building the local assembly. Amen. And as you've seen, we've got our resident pastor, Pastor Isaac, and his wonderful wife who hold the food in Colin when the man of God is not available. Actually, he takes more a prominent role now as the local pastor in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's give God a big, good, give God a good for that. <laughs> Bishop really said, church, you have, to, you have to release me. I have to start doing this missions work. And he was working in a, he had a business for those that know, uh, a very successful business in basically if you know, there's most successful black business in South East London for almost 25 years. Uh, it was called PJ Sparky, and the Lord told him to close the business. And it was a hard, it's a difficult time when the Lord tells you to do something. But when you're a servant of God, when God speaks, and no matter how hard it is, you just obey and you follow. He closed the business. I, I would not lie, I met the man of God when the business was booming. But it seems like he was more at peace and he was even blessed more when he let go of the business. And what I'm saying, church, I, I want us to be wise people. I'm not saying if you've got a job, you've got a nine to five job. God has to really direct you to do that. Because the Lord knew that the man of God needed to go and do his work. Amen. So he had to, he had to leave his nine to five job. When he left the business, things were not easy. So I'm not coming to speak fairy tales here. I'm going to speak real life. Things were not easy, but the faith of God in the man of God and the woman of God, they just continue persevering to make sure that they push on with the kingdom of God. Amen. As years went on by, the Lord started opening doors in 2014. Um, my sister and I, prophetess, we had a privilege to go to Zimbabwe uh, for after a very, very long time. And when we went there, that was the beginning of setting up like a layer, sweeping the road so that the work of God can start to start, you know, the foundation can be laid. So we went to Zimbabwe and doors were opening. But it, it, God does things in a very mysterious way. The man of God that we, were, we went to Zimbabwe, the man of God that we met in Zimbabwe, who the work was going to be started through, ended up not being the right person. It's like a David kind of situation. Everyone is looking at the nice, handsome man, and the, 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 the Lord says, no, that's not the one that I want. When we go, we have to just obey God. But I thank God that Colin Church will walk in the spirit. Amen. I'm not saying your church or your assembly doesn't. Because you are here, it shows that you walk in the spirit. Because the Bible says the steps of a righteous man are ordered by God. So we're together, aren't we guys? Church? Amen. I like to be free, so I'm just going to say that. So the work of God started, but it didn't start with the man of God that 
we thought the work was going to start with. I had the privilege of meeting this apostle man of God. Uh, we went to 2014, and the prophetess and bishop went in 2015, in January, to lay a foundation now of calling. When they got there, the person they were supposed to be linked with, to start the church with, it ended up turning upside down, and it ended up being someone else. And there was a group of people that were praying, and they said that for the past 15 years, they've been praying and fasting every week, and asking God to send a father. And but someone invited them to a meeting that was happening in, 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 in a call, one of the calling meetings that were happening, I say crusade, and when they went there, they said, by the spirit, they, they discerned that Bishop was going to be the father and prophetess was going to be their mother in the Lord. So they approached him and said, man of God, I feel, I'm just paraphrasing, so I'm not saying exactly how it happened because of time. And then they joined forces, we call him, and his name is Pastor Jeremiah. And Pastor Jeremiah being the, be, ended up being the, we we'll say the pioneer of the work that is happening in Zimbabwe. The work of calling started in 2016, uh, 15. 2015 started laying the foundation. 2016, they went, they've been going to Zimbabwe quite back and forth, back and forth. But I'm proud to stand here and say this year in January, Colin Zimbabwe was celebrating their first year anniversary with a, with a membership of close to 300, close to 300 people in the church in a year. And this is all the doing of God. And this is to say that when God has given you an assignment or something to do, when you follow it, God will add himself. It's not the man of God or the woman of God adding, but it is the spirit of God that's leading God's people to the house. Even as we speak, there's testimonies of people being healed in hospitals, people coming back for, to life because someone has started witchcraft, demons fleeing, people being delivered, lives being set free, and God opening doors. God comes to set us free. John 10, 10 says that a thief comes to steal, kill, and to destroy, but I've come to give you life and to give it to you abundantly. And God is giving abundance of life in Zimbabwe as we speak in Jesus' name. I could go on and on about Zimbabwe because there's a lot of work that has happened there in Botswana. But I'm just testifying of what God is doing in a nutshell. Amen? Amen. Are, we, are we together so far, guys? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And in 2016, the same year, the Lord opened the door in Kenya. Um, Pastor Sam is supposed to be here. I think he will come a bit later, I'm not quite sure. Uh, from CCC in Coventry, God connected Colin to Coventry. The testimony is, the woman of God was ministering at a conference. I think it's a women conference. And she gave a word to Pastor Sam's wife that next year, it's, it's sort of an Elisha kind of word, that next year, I feel that the Lord is about to give, the Lord is gonna give you a son. And I don't know if you say next year, and when they, they were, the, the, she wasn't pregnant, they've got kids who were going to university, uh, one university, one in secondary school, they thought, no, we thought we finished having children. Uh, not, we're not gonna have any more children. As, he, as, he, as the Lord had it, uh, they called the woman of God and said, woman of God, you gave us a word last year. You said that this year we're gonna have a son. And the Lord has blessed us with, his, with a son. And as we speak right now, God opened the connection. Let's give God a big round of applause for that. Because of that word, I, I'm trying to say this and encourage us, I don't want to take time because time is already far spent, but because of that word, I just want to leave something with us as well. Because of the words, the very words that we speak, the man of God is always saying, every word that we speak, even the Lord says that we will be judged on every word. Sometimes we say things as if I'm just joking, and we've already destroyed someone's destiny. You could say to someone you're ugly and say you're just joking, you don't know what you've done inside of them, and they can carry that thing for a long time. God has not called us to speak negative. God has called us to speak life. So the woman of God spoke life and that opened a mighty door. Not only did it open a good friendship in the Lord, but it also opened opportunity for the man and the woman of God to go to Kenya. If Pastor Sam was here, I would have wanted him to tell his own testimony of what the Lord did in Kenya. Amen. I just want to give honor to our Bishop, Bishop Vanessa, who welcome me in the mighty name of Jesus. And the woman of God, Bishop Judith, Bishop Judith, a pastor man here in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Sorry, I said it in that way. I had to do that because I'll forget. So, amen. But the Lord opened that door. Bishop and prophetess went to Kenya and signs and wonders were following. The Bible says to those that believe, 
signs and wonders will follow. They went to Kenya and so much work was done, deliverance was done, the fire of God was ignited in the churches in Kenya. As we speak, invitations are coming to Kenya. The Lord opened the door for the woman of God. You know when God starts opening doors, it becomes very sporadic. The woman of God doors were opening, she was invited to Uganda to go and minister in Uganda. Things were happening in Uganda. A door opened last year again through the social media, amen, in uh, India. A door opened in India, um, a bishop, a bishop, his name is Big, his name is Pastor Joseph as well. He said it is Joseph, and he just said to Bishop, I'm going to be a son. We share the same thing, I'm also be a son. But um, the pastor in India, a door opened, and Colin went to India, and churches in India started submitting their churches to the church of Colin. Let's give Jesus a round of applause. I'm saying this to say that this, the work that has been happening in Colin is not the work of the bishop, it's the work of God. If the work it was of the bishop, he would get tired and he would just give up. But if God is with him and God is with us all, the work of God gets done. Things get done. So it's nothing to do with the man, but God needs a vessel that says I'm available. It is to do with what God wants to do. If a child says they want to serve God and they're open, God will use the child to do the same work. But obviously the child wouldn't be going to India, you know, at a young age. They finish school first, then they can go to India. But I wanted to just say this. Uh, I shared about the prophecy of a child, even our own, my own son, Noah, is six today. The woman of God prophesied that God is going to give you a son. And next year, the day following day, January the 18th, 2011, I had a son. So I know that the word of God and the spirit of God is in calling church. Amen. Amen. So let's just say God for what God is doing in calling. I'm just going to round it up. Just give a round of up to the Lord, please. Thank you. Hallelujah. And the work of India opened. There was a prophecy that came in 2007 that churches will be submitting their churches. Uh, we've got Apostle and Prophetess Grace in the house today. They came and they're coming from a big ministry in Zambia. Apostle and I'm doing the Apostle of God with a man of the word of God. He came and he submitted to call him for a season. Um, I learned so much from you, man of God and woman of God. These are people that we learned a lot from. God used people who have been far off in ministry to come and submit this ministry to call in church because they could discern in the spirit that there's something that God was doing and call in church. They came, they submitted, and to the glory of God, we relaunched their ministry, Word of Life International Ministries in Maidstone in the mighty name of Jesus. It was launched in earlier on in June last month. And they've already started meeting, and I believe God is going to be raising a mighty work in Maidstone in the mighty name of Jesus. I, I said, I don't know whether it was a dream. I saw the man of God standing, and there was red carpet, and there was a vast amount of people, and he was teaching the word of God. So I believe God did something. The Lord spoke to the man of God, bishop and prophetess, to say, it's time for them to go and start the work. And this is to say, if you're coming from any church, please don't run out to start your own church. If you're submitted to a ministry, stay submitted, serve faithfully. When your time comes, if God has called you to go and start a church, when that time comes, everything will be easy. You know, the best thing is when you get a good send-off, when the Lord is pleased, and when the apostles release you, you get you even become greater than them because you are submitted to them. Amen. So learn from the men and the women of God around you, and you will grow in the mighty name of Jesus. The work in India has been done. It's been it's, it, the Lord is keep, keeping on adding on to the church. Deliverances are happening. More churches are submitting to call a church in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Just to close everything in perspective, a few years ago, the Lord also opened the door, and I believe I know why God is doing what He's doing. In just in terms of calling, and all these prophecies come to pass. I'm talking about submitting. Colin Church submitted itself to an organization called TAPAC. I mean, Bishop Vanessa is here, she represents TAPAC. Our Archbishop is gonna come later on. TAPAC is a Transatlantic Pacific Alliance of Churches. It's an organization that brings churches together so that we can work together. The same vision that was in Colin is the same vision that TAPAC has. Bishop said, man of God, I submit my ministry into your hands. So it's not a one thing where Bishop was other ministries submitting to Colin, but it was a situation where Colin also need, was submitting to other organizations. And we are under TAPA, and because of the covering of TAPA, 
even greater doors are opening. As we speak, College Church, for the third year, we're now running the Bible College in conjunction with Revelation Bible College. Give God a round of applause. Yeah. It's an accredited, it's an accredited uh, institution by the University in Florida, uh, and it's also in conjunction with, I think, uh, with uh, Wolverhampton University. What is it called? Wolverhampton. But it is accredited um, uh, Bible school where when you get a license, it is recognized by the authorities of the land. It is important to honor the law of the land. And this year, I'm in the class, in Jesus' name. Uh, we've already had two graduations, and we've got reverence of reverence in the house in the name of Jesus. If I was to call the reverence, the whole sentence would take a long time. But I just want to thank God for what God has been doing in calling for the past nine years. And I believe that for the next hundred and something, if the Lord tarries, if not thousands of years, We'll be standing on the on a massive podium and saying, the Lord has been awesome. We won't even need to say it because the word of God will be speaking for itself. Thank you for your time and God bless you.